Well, I think it's, um, you know, the sense uh, that one is getting out here, I mean, um, are we trying to suggest that this is more about information, aggregating of information, getting a more democratic view on information, and it's not necessarily always the case of owning a message or trying to 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 send out a message? I mean, what what what's really happening? Because uh, quite often, and and I think a lot of people in the the in our industry, in the PR industry, would would hear it's you know there, there's questions about messaging. Uh, there's a question about getting people to, to kind of uh, follow you. Uh, then there is this whole aspect of trying to get the, uh, you know, indulge in conversation. So very often we feel in our industry is that uh, PR people, you know, assuming that they're all good at conversations and handling conversations, etc., would be very comfortable with the social media space. Now, uh, so, so often it, it, it goes back to the aspect of conversation and messages. Now, in a scenario like that, I mean, uh, is that really what we should be focusing on? Because what I'm hearing is, one, is it's a place for people, and, you know, therefore people decide perhaps, you know, what happens out there. You're talking about information and experiencing the brand. You, you've been, you know, mentioning the same aspect of, again, about information and, and aspects of that. So what's really, what, what, would, what, what is the, the, the area that, that is actually extremely important in this when, when we look at uh, representing a brand? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you know, I think there are three levels to this. You know, at, the, at a very basic level, it's brands talking to people, right, which is pushing messages across in whatever media that you have. Then we got fascinated with the digital and moved on to the next one, which is engagement. People talking to brands, you know, brands listening to people. But I think, you know, both of these are not, you know, they, they play a role. I'm not saying they're not uh, irrelevant. I mean, I'm not saying they're not relevant, but they're suboptimal. A, a real scalable brand is built in today's world when people talk about the brand, you know. For me, the best social media brand is not the one with the most Twitter followers or Facebook page, you know, page likes. For me, the most social, the biggest social media brand is Apple because we discuss everything that Apple does, you know, and we do it all the time. So it's people talking about the brand. And therefore, when will people talk about the brand? When it's worth talking about, you know? Somewhere what's happened is if, if 20 years back it was about brands talking and people listening, today it's about brands doing and people talking. So when people do the talking, brands need to shut up and do things, right? And therefore, it's about brand actions. You know, I, I came at the fag end of that CSR kind of thing. And so I could get some idea of what Coke or someone was doing. If Coke is doing these great things, then people will talk about it. You know, and finally, therefore, it, how, do you, how do you crack social media? But not by being in social media, but being to, by doing cool things so that people talk about you. So at the end of it, you know, uh, 20 years back, if you wanted to be differentiated, you have to say something different, right? Uh, 20 years back, the coolest brands were always Coke and Pepsi, which were great brands, colored water, great advertising, right? Today, the coolest brands are Google and Apple, right? And, and they don't do much advertising. They are because of their actions. It's because of the stuff they do. So I think fundamentally, brands need to do cool things, you know, and then people will talk about them. I would agree with what Ramesh says, uh, but not all brands are Apple and Google. And for a lot of brands, it's not that easy to do cool stuff in the space that they're in. So, but that said, they still have a role to play in social media, and one of which is being able to listen to what, what, what people are saying about them, being able to uh, re uh, respond to customer complaints if there are any complaints being s where people are talking about them, and uh, being more helpful to consumers who are talking about them. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the a point about whether people are really, whether the social network is, whether social media is really democratic. In a sense it is, but in, in other ways it's also, it's also like animal farm, where you know, not all animals are equal. Yeah. And there, there, is, there will be some people who are influencers, who have larger reaches, and as a PR professional, it is possible still to get your story across to a larger set of people if, if you are able to reach out to these influencers. Now, the, what my caveat, I mean, the, the only disclaimer I'd say to this is, you still have to be focused on the content, make sure that the content is actually relevant to your consumers, and that it's actually authentic. With all of you and your current clients, how many of them take listening quite seriously? I mean, let's just get down to this. How many of them take listening very seriously, and not with the numbers, I'm trying to look at qualitative analysis, not just quantitative. You saw, I, I don't even see more than 10 hands go up. And that's, that's essentially a huge problem. Whenever you have chatter in a social space, you need to have multiple listening ports. It's, it's really simple. 
I mean, offline, online merge at some point in time. What happens when there's a huge crowd and people are talking in a crowd? What do you do? What is the first thing that you would do? You'd send out as many people as possible and try and figure out what is the pulse of the crowd. But I don't see a lot of brands doing that. I don't see a lot of brands doing that with regards to specific aspects of the product, with regards to service, pre-sales, after-sales. This is completely non-existent. How can you be social if the very first aspect of social itself is listening? Imagine you get into a party, and the first thing that you do is not just go tom tom about yourself. The first thing you do is get into a group, listen to what the conversation is all about, and then participate. If listening is not the first step, then participation is going to go completely wrong. When it comes to the PR industry, uh, we have a lot of things what I heard is, is okay, we're listening, we, we're doing that. But we're also talking about perhaps uh, in some form, goodwill generation. It's trying to create a set of people who talk about us. Okay, so we're talking about word of mouth out here. Then how do we handle a situation where we're looking at return on investment, on the time being spent in that space, and when we're looking at sales, when we're looking at it from a business imperative point of view? Because that's the that's a challenge we face in general, even against the ad world, which is used to controlling the message, used to sleeping with the media, and buying space, and doesn't actually believe necessarily in convincing someone of something or engaging. You know, because they can't engage, they buy. So. Uh, and we, we always face this challenge of, uh, of, of trying to determine or trying to make sense of what we're doing by trying to create some kind of a matrix. Now, how does that work when we're looking at conversations or when we're looking at uh, listening or when we're looking at aggregating information and making it a resource? What is the solution? I mean, how do we work this around and how do we convince clients that there is a lot more to this than just uh, the aspect of uh, driving sales? Because as we said again, uh, at the beginning, most people said that they didn't, just like you said with traditional media, but it's the same challenge that we're facing. See, uh, as far as measurement goes, the problem is, you know, like in any other media, you have pretty basic metrics here going around. But for the lack of anything better, I think we got to live with those, right? Unless, I mean, even in advertising, you have GRPs, but you can't really measure the persuasiveness of something unless you go and do a U and A or a field study or something of that sort. So pretty much in social media, we are also restricted to this horrible thing called likes and <laughs> followers and you know stuff like that, which can be gamed a bit, which can be you know quite a lot of things can be done to it. So. I think we're, you know, as the industry progresses, I think this will get better. Like uh, his company is doing stuff exactly along those lines, trying to make sense of what's going on. You know, there are measures right now. From what I know, I think AC Nielsen has some kind of buzz metrics, you know, where it's a quantitative kind of measure. And there are more measures which are getting more qualitative and softer kind of thing in nature as to what people are saying about brands. So that should come through. I don't think companies have a choice of whether this is important by comparing it to TV and stuff like that, you know. Uh, because we're not talking about social media is just Facebook or Twitter, right? Everything is digital, everything is social. So tomorrow your TV is social, your TV is digital, your newspaper is social, your newspaper is digital. So I don't think there's going to be an allocation happening that I'll put so much on TV, so much on press, and so much on digital. In the future, just about everything is digital, and it's just content which is created, which is coming out in various forms and being accessed by customers in you know, various uh, devices, wherever they are. So at the end of it, it's not about a company allocating budgets to digital. It's about understanding that the future is digital. And, and therefore, how do we reinvent ourselves for that? Right? So, uh, and that's going to affect the way you define your brand. That's going to be, affect the way you doctor messaging to some extent, either by doing things or by creating some good content. That's going to affect the brand, uh, the, the way you do media. I don't think that you can't surround a customer anymore. Right? You can, there are millions of media out there. You can't take over all the media because people are the media. What you can do instead is, instead of looking at 360 and surround, you start looking at uh, idea distribution. You start looking at how do I propagate a meme, you know? So it, at, along the way, from defining the brand to deciding the interventions to uh, actually spreading the meme to measuring, there's a new way which is evolving. And, and, that's, and, and there's really no choice because the world is changing. So it's, it's really not a question of, well, what do I put where? Everything is going to be digital. When it comes to assessing the value of goodwill, now that's a problem which all media suffers from. But if we actually look at ROI on social media analytics, then we can actually, we can actually put numbers to it. We can say that this, this, this uh, particular analytics that you did, this, this project that you did, had this tangible benefit. And I'm sure all of us can give, us, give examples of brands that we have helped 
achieve that kind of tangible benefit. We have worked with a paints company who uses our product called Explicate, and they're able to get actual sales leads through social media by joining conversations around paint. Now, we have we've worked with a, 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 TV, a TV channel which analyzes qualitative comments that people make about each and every show of all their main shows, of all their main programs. And they're analyzing what aspects of the show people liked, what aspects of the show they didn't like, what people said about specific episodes, what they said about the, the performers in each of those episodes. And we're giving them real qualitative data that they can use to improve their show. Now, so it's no, it's no longer in this ephemeral space of likes and dislikes and whether there are people, how many people are talking about the brand, but actual numbers in terms of what did people like and how can you improve your show? Or here's someone who wants to buy your product, why don't you try and connect him with your sales team?